Hello, it's Monday night and we are talking about technical analysis for crypto. Um, I feel like we're still in a big correction that we kind of was, we were in a bit of a correction last week. I feel like in the crypto world, we got a little bit ahead of our skis, you know, with the ETF news and over exuberance. And then of course, then of course the ETH ETF filing um, got everybody excited about ETH. And then of course the fake filing today, the fake um, uh, filing of a BlackRock ETF application for Ripple has caused a really nasty false breakout reversal on Ripple. So, you know, I don't know what next. We're going to see Chainlink and everything else registering for an ETF. It would be crazy. Um, I'm not, I, I keep saying, you know, I kind of feel like the more pumped and, you know, certain the market gets about this uh, Bitcoin ETF going to save, you know, the market makes me think that we could see a reversal, you know, if the ETF gets announced. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to happen. I kind of feel like it might be the beginning of January, the way things are going, but you never know. It could come any time. So for now, everything stays bullish and we are just in a correction. But let's talk about those levels. So let's in fact, we'll come back to Ripple in a minute. Let's start with Bitcoin. We'll go in order. So we stay really bullish in Bitcoin. As you know, I had a kind of resistance zone between 34 and a half and 35,000 in Bitcoin here on the weekly chart. It was a big 38.2 Fibri trace from the high that we made in November 2021 to the low we made in November 2022. And if we measure these swings, it was also 61.8 of this first swing. And we've kind of moved beyond it. So for me, as long as we kind of stay above 34,000 and change, I feel like we're still going higher. And 40 to 42,000 is the next kind of uh, zone. That's where we will have retraced 50% of this entire drop. And that's also where... If this was a big ABC in the middle here, we will have an equal measured move between that zone. So if we are going to see some profit taking, maybe after an ETF gets announced, that kind of zone is where I'm going to be looking between 40 and 42,000. If we break above it, of course, we've got the 61.8 Fib at 48,500 and so on. For me, you know, Fibs, I kind of go level to level to level and when we run out we're at new highs and happy days so that's i'm not going to talk about the big swing for for bitcoin at the moment but that's basically where we are now switch to regular candles this 38.2 then should be support but they are a bit of messy levels so i'm not going to be bearish if 35,000 doesn't hold but if this swing low doesn't hold I'm going to be a little bit more bearish. Um, for now, this is just a correction in an uptrend, not a bearish reversal. Even though we've gone sideways for four days before we triggered it, that's, you know, it, it's not, it, we're in an uptrend on every kind of metric, the way you look at it. It's just at some point we are going to see a pullback and we don't want it to turn into a bigger pullback arguably we could say well if we do what happens if we break these lows how far back are we going to come well i think we could argue that we are potentially in a little bit of a rising channel here and if we were to reverse here this would be if we drew this as a parallel channel from the lows in december and the lows in september and these highs then potentially we are talking about back to the bottom of the channel aren't we and that would mean back to the weekly 200 moving average and so on so uh yeah for now it looks lovely still going up nothing to worry about and this is a maybe channel we've only got two touches on either side really for it to confirm a trend line you kind of need three touches so um, you know, we could have a shallow pullback and just keep crawling up this top rail until we get to the 61.8, couldn't we? So Bitcoin stays really bullish. I think we saw some money going out of Bitcoin into ETH after the ETH ETF news. And if we look at ETH on a weekly chart here, it was a lovely breakout. But unfortunately, it was a lovely breakout after a three-wave correction. My problem with ETH, you know, 
And I know bottoms often start like this, but this whole rally, you know, from the June 2022 lows look very choppy and corrective and overlapping. It's not kind of inspiring for a bottom yet. I would almost like to see like a false, if we were to draw this, for example, as a channel, I'd almost like to see a false breakdown um, and then I would get really bullish. However, that's just how it looks. When I look at, uh, for me, when I look at the Fib reversal here, I kind of feel like, so if I go from the low in 2018 to the high that we made in 2021, this is a reversal from a 786 Fib. Normally, if you get above here, we should get to the 38.2. That's the target in 30,000. So it is possible that we're just going to, you know, we're doing a big, we could come back, you know, support becomes resistance. 1909 was my breakout level from this uh, three wave correction here. So if I draw it like this, here was our three wave correction. That was our fib level. This is what our channel looked like. This was our breakout level. So on a on any pullback and if stuff gets a little bit larry this week, 1909 is where we should not really close below because if we do close below then it now becomes a double top kind of sideways range doesn't it and it's not so clear then that we have um, broken out and are going to see new highs after this three wave correction so 1909 really important support on any pullback if we get a bigger pullback if we don't get such a big pull, big pullback and we may not we could just see a three wave correction and we just carry on higher if we can hold new highs above 2142 i'm looking for 2474 and then 3000 really is the fib target for eth us dollar let's talk about eth bitcoin because that's quite an interesting chart pattern uh, but, 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 but let's talk about this one on the weekly, I tell you why this is an interesting chart pattern, because here on the weekly, this weekly 200 moving average and these previous lows are pretty interesting. Now, again, we've done that 61.838, so from this high, all-time highs here in uh, 2018 to the lows in 2019. We've done that 61.8, 38.2 thing back and forward. And very often with corrections, when you see this three wave move, it will very often turn into a bigger three wave correction. So I kind of feel like that's what we're looking at here. Now, we could, if we get back above this 38.2 level at 0 0.057, I think continue higher to the middle of this range and potentially this whole correction would be over. So that would mean if we can hold above 0 0.057, we target 0 0.069, then back to the highs, and then hopefully next swing higher. But this 0 0.057 is quite important resistance. And so far here on the daily, we've had a little bit of a struggle with it, haven't we? And it's also the daily 50. So are we going to keep going higher? Ah, I don't know. That's That would be the tell for me, that level. Now, if we don't, we possibly go a little bit lower and again in an equal measured move correction from here. So first swing, let's make sure I've drawn it correctly. Second swing, and that means we drop down and the support, ideal support would be at 0 0.0461. So no bottom yet, but I think if we can hold above 0 0.057, we have and ETH will be outperforming uh, Bitcoin, uh, but otherwise, we've probably got a little bit further to drop to 0 0.046. Now this move in ETH has been really good for ETH altcoins. Quite a lot of altcoins actually have done really well. And for me, you know, ETH Bitcoin has, if ETH is outperforming Bitcoin, it usually means that alts are outperforming as well. So um, it's a pretty good sign, but not quite yet the bullish reversal we need to see. Now for me, um, Above this previous swing high, above the above this weekly 20 moving average, above 0 0.0616 would be uh, confirm. I think that we're on our way to the middle and back to the top of the range in ETH against Bitcoin. So, yeah, looking positive, but it's not quite the bullish reversal that we need yet. Okay, now let's go through some requests and a couple of charts that I think are uh, interesting. 
So first one we're going to look at. Uh, let's let's just draw them from scratch. So we're going to look at Arbitrum, which is a favourite of mine. Let's look at it against the US dollar. What is going on here in Arbitrum? First off, I think if this is the, our first bounce off the lows here, and I know this looks like three waves, but sometimes waves ones look like that. This next swing that we've done is so much bigger than the first swing. If it has a relationship to the first swing, like 1.618 or 2.618, which this does, I'm looking for it to be this pullback to be a wave four. So we go wave one, two, three, four, and then another leg higher. So ideally, we're going to look for this to not break the most common retrace and a wave is back to the previous wave four. So that would be back to this swing low. And that would mean back to this daily 200 moving average. So we're going to stay bullish as long as we can stay above this 1.05 area, really. If I put the 236 fib on all the way from this low, this now what if we break underneath that, our next is going to be the 38.2. And I'm really actually going to do just this swing because the most common retrace of a wave three is 38.2. So that gives us 1.049. So it's pretty close to 1.05. So we can say if we break underneath 1.11, we're going to see a bigger pullback to the daily 200 moving average and 1.049 in Arbitrum. If we stay here, we're still trending higher and it's probably not the way forward that we're looking for yet. Uh, although in terms of scale, that would mean we still go 1, 2, 3, 4 and we've got another swing higher to come. So those are the levels I'm looking at in Arbitrum. And because at 1.049, we have that lovely 200 day moving average. I think that that's a really good place. If you're looking for a pullback long in this chart, uh, that would be a really good place to look for it. Now, let's look at bigger targets if we reverse and go higher from there. You know, it, Somewhere, but these somewhere at these swing highs, I think somewhere between this 50 and 61.8, at least kind of 1.3. Um, but because this looks like a big three wave correction, the most common first target is a 786 retrace, which would mean the bigger target, if we hold this on a pullback and we break to new highs, would be 1.589 for Arbitrum. So for now, we are in a correction and my ideal would be a pullback to that 200 day moving average for Arbitrum and see if we get a buy signal there. Let's look at TIA um, Celestia. I, gosh, we're looking, I really wonder if, when, whenever you see a spike like this, it's really not a good buy, it's a sell. So what would be now, potentially in this, because this is potentially we have just done a wave three and we could do another swing higher. So if we apply the same rules here and we'll take this swing. We're underneath the two, two, three, six at five. So 4.5 would be the first place. I think I think if on the four, that would be the previous swing low. But because this is so stretched, you know, we might come back to this low here and 4.09. Just going to see where the 236 is. Yeah. So we have started a bigger correction. Now, you can see that at first attempt, when I put my fibs from here on this low, you can see we tried to hold this 236 and couldn't back above 5.09 would say we are going up again. But for now, I think we've done first swing consolidation and we're going to do another swing lower and I would say 4.54 first target potentially 4.09 but when I look at how far we are from this hourly 200 moving average we could see a much bigger pullback so for me this is one where I put my high Kanashi on I wait for a four hour pullback buy and I, I think that we are going down until we see a bottom and we turn up higher again so further to fall 
unfortunately for TIA. Uh, when, after a big spike like this, yeah, n no buy it to sell. Okay, let's take a look at Avax, one of my favourite charts. Let's get it the weekly. Put regular candles on. Now, I haven't got all of our moving averages, so let's, chuck, let's chuck them on. Now, if we look at this on a weekly, potentially, we are building a pretty interesting base here, aren't we? And it's a really good level when we look left and look back in the past to June 2021. And this double bottom low here is really holding up pretty good as support and resistance. But this is not a bullish reversal until really we break out of this sideways range to new highs or um, start making higher highs. So at the moment, you know, we've we've taken out this first last swing high before the low. Now we need to make a higher low to be turning up again. And I think ideally, because this was such a big move last week, we should really look for this. We, we don't want to go back and when you break above a, a, two, a 50 moving average, you don't really want to break back the other side. So we want to see this weekly 50 moving average at 14 hold. And if we look at that on the uh, daily here, that kind of would be, remember the weekly close is Sunday night, right? So we, that's also 50% of this whole swing. So we could kind of overshoot that level, come back and tag this daily 200. But as long as we close the week back above 14.19, I think we're looking pretty good for more upside. But we have started a bigger correction. Going from this low at the moment here on the daily, we've, we're underneath this 236 Fib, which are trend support. And so bigger support is here at 14.19. And there is a risk we come back a little bit further to 12 before this bottoms. Most corrections are pretty good three ways. So even here was a pretty good three. So I wouldn't buy the first time it turns green again. I would wait for something more like that and a three wave correction. Now why has AVAX reversed here? Is it kind of... Let's take a bigger view here now. Going to go all the way from the lows, all time lows, time highs. See where that I want to see where that 886 fib is. Sometimes when you come back to it, it's pretty nasty resistance. And oh, that's kind of where we are. It's not really kind of paying that much attention to it, is it? So I'm going to ignore that. Yeah, so let's take the most recent five wave slower. When I'm not kind of sure of the FIPS, I take the most recent five waves that we are operating within. So now I'm going to go from this high to this low. And so this means we have done a textbook reversal at a 786 FIB. And that means that our target normally is the 38.2, which is 14 as we drew every other method. So the weekly 50 moving average, the daily two, you know, for a whole bunch of reasons, 14 is the most likely uh, level that we pull back to. And I expect it to come back in three waves in AVAX. Okay, let's take a look at MINA, M-I-N-A. Three wave correction beginning now. Gosh, this is quite similar, isn't it? This is the most recent five waves lower. I'm going to put my fib on from this high to this low. This time we reversed at this 61.8, spiked all the way up there. Normally you come back to the 38.2, sometimes in this case it was the 236 fib and the weekly 50 moving average. Now I said, if you close above it, you shouldn't close back underneath it. So we're going to say 0.56 is pretty key. 
for a weekly close and we've done a very nice bounce from it. I'm going to look for this to hold on a retest and if it doesn't we're going to see a bigger three wave correction and this whole wave one is complete. So a bigger three wave correction here would mean 0.51 and maybe even a retest of the lows. So yeah, I think we are seeing another swing lower. If I'm wrong and this is the correction complete and we've started, then we kind of just wait, need to wait for it to turn green and turn up again. Um, it does look, yeah, 0.56 and if it overshoots 0.51, not ready to buy yet until this turns up again. Now potentially we could just be doing a three wave correction here. This is the start of a new wave one, but it needs to show me a little bit more. Um, that it's doing that and it's going up again and so I'm not quite ready for that. I think there is a little bit more downside to come in this one. Okay, let's take a look at some more coins that I'm looking at. First off, I'm looking at bearish reversal candles. No, Prime. Huge week in Prime last week. I bought a little bit. It's stopped at a 786 fib level and it's a little bit annoying because now I can count five waves up however within this most recent bit I can't so again I'm hoping that we're just doing a nice little wave four here and we're going to see another leg higher so from this low look we've got three waves back one three waves are normally a correction five waves are normally impulsive so I'm looking for one two three four five so because we've reversed bigger picture fib rules because we reversed at a 786 if we close underneath this 61.8 I'm going to say we're probably coming back down here to the 38.2 next at 3.3 so I'm going to cut my longs on a daily close in prime if it closes underneath 4.72 now that's one way of looking at it right but if we can also say, let's hide this. If this is wave one, two, three, we could say that the most common retrace of a wave uh, three is 38.2, which is a little bit lower. So potentially we could come back to 4.58 in this pullback and, you know, no damage to the trend. In fact, you know, we're only going to be damaged down here. So I'm going to be a little bit patient with this one, but somewhere in that range, kind of 4.58, this actually would be an ideal buy or potentially back to these lows at 4.2, which would be a 50% retrace. So it has started a correction. If I put the 236 fib from this most recent swing though, we're holding it, aren't we? Haven't broken underneath it. So this, yeah, is not over. And um, I think just a correction for now for Prime. Underneath 4.5, I think it could turn into a bigger pullback. But for now, just a pullback in an uptrend. So I'm holding on. OP is another one that I bought a little of this weekend. Now, the main reason I bought this, let's zoom out as I said to the guys in the group, was because if I measure from the, the rally that we did from June until August, and I measure it and I project it from this low, I had two upside targets, the 61.8 here at 1.72, and then the equal measured move back to the 50% of the entire drop. So from this high to low, that equal measured move, 50% level comes in at 2.085, 2.09. So that had always been my kind of long target and my confirmation that we were going up there was this break here above, above first off above this 61.8 level and then holding a new high, which we seem to be doing. So I'm still long of this one. I I think there's a good chance we could even hold this 38.2 at 1.8 and keep going higher. And I'm going to only cut this position if we close back underneath 1.7 two eight so just again everything is a little bit of correction now short term this looks quite toppy doesn't it again i'm only going to cut this 
underneath 1.72 and then I'm just going to wait for a bigger pullback and see what this does and sit on my hands for now. Um, so pretty much everything just got a little bit too ahead of itself and we're seeing bigger pullbacks this week. Could they turn into bigger topping patterns? Just like Bitcoin, you know, at the top of that channel. Yes, they could. For now, though, we haven't got any evidence of that, but we should always be cautious. You know, as soon as everybody gets bullish, that is the really the time to be cautious in this market. Uh, one more, let's take a look at a link. What a horrible reversal today in link. So it's a three day reversal pattern. When you have a big green up candle followed by a doji, followed by a big down day that closes more than 50% down on your green up day, it's a three day candlestick bearish reversal pattern. And so we are looking a bit of bigger pullback in link. And if we take a look at where we are in link, this is another one where I'm going to look for this weekly 200 moving average to be support, but I'm only going to be bearish if we close back underneath 11.44, which for me was the confirmation of the bullish reversal and link. I think we're going to see a pullback and we have more upside to come and yeah, 26 in this one, but it is starting a bigger pullback and maybe a little bit of a shakeout. Maybe everybody got too bullish. And the other thing here, if we say that this was wave one, wave two, one, two, three, four, five for a fifth wave, the most common retrace is either a 38.2 or back to the bottom of wave four. So bottom of wave four would be down here around 11 and 38.2 retrace of this swing would be higher. So it gives us a kind of reversal uh, zone in link 12.4. In fact, that 50% really is that previous swing low and that probably is where we're headed back to. So if you're stalking a long entry in chain link, ideally 11, 11 and a half would be where we come back to and we'll look for a bullish reversal there. Okay, good luck. I hope that was useful. Um, in stock indexes, I have been talking about Tesla this is quite interesting. Now, originally I had this previous swing low and this 200-day uh, moving average is a really good support. If we could close above and hold above that 200-day moving average, Tesla looks really good to continue higher. One of the main reasons why I like Tesla here is we've made a textbook equal measured move correction. So if I measure from this high to this low, project it from here, we exactly reversed at, let's, uh, we exactly reversed at, let's take all these other noise off, the equal measured move. Now for me, if you, the confirmation that you've reversed and you've made a three wave equal measured move correction is when you close back above the 61.8 level and that comes in at 225. So a close back above 225 in Tesla should see us back to the top of the channel and potentially new highs if we can break out from there above sort of 255. Now when we look at this 225 previous support has become pretty tough resistance but back above it in Tesla that's where we're looking for. So above 225 we should see 255 next. This is an hourly chart I'm looking at. Uh, let's see if we can do it. If we can't, honestly, it stays bearish and we're still looking for lower in Tesla. Um, so 225 bull bear line, support becomes resistance. Okay, good luck, good night. Let me know if there's anything you'd like me to